Hello, everybody. Thank you for the uh, time and welcome to uh, QQE. Uh, my name is Ryan Kelly. I'm uh, president and CEO of QQE, also one of uh, four shareholders, my other partners here behind me. Uh, really excited to have this uh, amazing group here today. So uh, to have uh, Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor Husted, uh, Senator Portman, and uh, Congressman Turner, uh, Johnson and, and Shabbat, thank you so much for uh, for being here. It's really an honor uh, for me. It's an honor for uh, our shareholders, and uh, I know it's an honor uh, for our people. Uh, we had a lot of excitement and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of teammates. Uh, really proud to be uh, be a part of this and uh, have this experience today. So so thank you to all of you and uh, welcome to QQE, all right. Governor. All right, thank you. Ryan, Ryan, thank you very, very much. <clears throat> don't, don't go far, because I'm going to bring you back up for a second. I guess. But, well, we're, we're delighted to be here. Uh, later in this week, on, on, on Friday, will be the official uh, kickoff of Intel, the official groundbreaking, although they certainly have been uh, breaking a lot of ground uh, over there and, and moving forward. But one of the things that we said and one of the things that we knew when we were able to get the Intel deal done uh, was not only were there suppliers in Ohio, uh, but there were also suppliers to suppliers in Ohio. And the, the, the impact uh, of having Intel in Ohio uh, was just, it was almost impossible to totally calculate what that was going to be. Um, we're at QQ, QQE today and this is, I think, a, a really just great, not only a great U.S. story, but this is a great Ohio story. Uh, you know, a couple facts. This is a company, QQE, that was a California company that has moved to Ohio. And we're very, very, of course, happy uh, and excited about that. It's also a company that is growing at a, what I would call an astronomical rate. Um, and that is also good, great for the Miami Valley, uh, good for Ohio, but also good, certainly good for, the, for this country. Uh, I'm, I want to ask um, Ryan to come back for a moment, though, because we had a conversation. Uh, I don't think that uh, you and the media had the opportunity to hear, um, and, it, and it came about from some of the employees that we were, we were talking to. And one of the things that... Uh, Lieutenant Governor Houston and I have really focused on uh, is the training, education for workers. Uh, we are creating in this state more jobs every single day than we have people to fill the jobs. Yet, um, we, we do have the ability um, to supply many of these, many of these jobs. Uh, we are blessed in Ohio to have some great career centers. We're blessed in Ohio to have a number uh, of great community colleges. So as QQE has worked to make sure they have the employees, uh, you know, they've established a great relationship with the Greene County Career Center. Uh, they've also uh, established a great relationship with Sinclair. And I want to ask Brian just to talk briefly about that, that relationship because it really does go back to what we have to do in Ohio. Uh, every single day, we have to make sure no lives are lost. We have to make sure that we are, we are focused on young people, but also older people, to make sure that they get the training uh, that, that they need. Brian, you want to just tell them the story. Absolutely. Thank you, Governor. So as a growing company, one of the biggest challenges that we deal with is uh, finding talent, and, and now more than ever. So. Uh, to deal with that challenge, one of the things that, that we're really proud of is we formed a state certified apprenticeship program with uh, St. Clair Community College. So we structure it where employees can hire on with us. They go to school half of the time. They work with us half the time. We pay for their school. Uh, we pay for their uh, wages while they're working with us. And every 12 months we're graduating a new, or after 12 months we graduate a class of uh, new certified uh, CNC machinists. And it's been a, a great program. Uh, we felt that we had to take more control of our destiny and start to do uh, do some of these programs if we're going to be successful as a growing business. 
want to talk a little bit about Sinclair? You've got a relationship with Sinclair. Absolutely. So uh, that program is sponsored with, uh, with Sinclair. So it's a partnership that we formed. Uh, they've been a great partner with us and, and done a very nice job putting that program together and then helping support it. Uh, and then we also do uh, an internship program with Green County uh, Career Center. And we have a very strong relationship with them. Since we've moved over here to Greene County, uh, we've gotten actively involved. We've hosted interns uh, through the summer, and uh, we want to really work hard to, to show that, that manufacturing today is not an old, dirty environment. It's a sophisticated environment. It's clean. It's a, it's a great place to work and a great place where people can have a, a, an excellent career. Great story. Yep. Ryan, thank you very much. Ryan is also uh, on the, the Greene County Career Center board and business board, which we think is so very, very important, that relationship between the local business community uh, and our manufacturing companies. Uh, let me now introduce uh, Lieutenant Governor John Houston, who's been certainly very much involved in, in all of this. John. Thanks, Governor. So earlier this year, I met with the owners and management team uh, of this great company, and they gave me the good news that this was headquartered in California, but they moved it to Ohio, which they joined more than 40 companies in the last three years that are located on the coast who've moved operations to Ohio. That's created over 12,000 jobs and $24 billion in investment. And that's worth noting, because this is a movement that's occurring to Ohio from the coast. And, uh, and while this is not why they moved here. Sometimes preparation meets opportunity and we get to capitalize it and capitalize on it and that's exactly what's happened. They said that they explained to me that this is, that they're part of the supply chain for the semiconductor industry and when Intel located, decided to choose Ohio as the place to locate, they saw it as a great opportunity to grow this business. Uh, and this would lead ultimately the expansion of hundreds of jobs here at this location. This is a prime example of what Pat Gelsinger of Intel talked about when he said, Ohio will become the heart of the Silicon Heartland uh, because not only will Intel be here, but will be suppliers and suppliers to suppliers, which is what we're experiencing today. Um, but we've created a great business climate in the state of Ohio. Businesses are moving here. We are winning new opportunities. And with the industry, the semiconductor industry, it's expected to grow over the next de decade from 500 to $550 billion industry to a $1.3 trillion industry. That's the opportunity that comes our way as a state right now to take advantage of locating and growing every supplier that we can for the semiconductor industry right here in Ohio. And uh, you can see here, even though Intel is going to be in central Ohio, here we have a southwest Ohio company that's going to grow and prosper as a result of that. And, uh, but as the governor mentioned, Ryan mentioned, opportunity comes with a challenge. It's building the workforce. But that's such a great opportunity because we have in the Miami Valley wonderful education partners, whether at Sinclair, the Miami Valley Career Technology Center, the Greene County Career Center, and others, where high school students and adults can go get the skills that they need in a very short period of time and come to work at a great manufacturing facility like this that's going to be here and growing for a very, very long time. The opportunity is amazing. If you were to go to ohiomeansjobs.com right now today, you would see that there are 196,000 jobs available there. 110,000 of those jobs pay $50,000 a year or more. And we have 35,000 people on unemployment in Ohio. That's three jobs that pay $50,000 a year or more for every one person on unemployment in the state. So my point being is that companies are hiring. These are great jobs. You can get trained. And so the people watching and watching on the news and reading the articles about today, take advantage of the opportunity for yourself, your children, your grandchildren, to get enrolled in one of the programs that are gonna be part of this growing industry. And um, it's very exciting about what's happening in our state right now. Uh, and we've done this over the course of time by building a great business environment, by building 
the educational institutions and, and creating the opportunities that now make Ohio the go-to state in the Midwest for high-tech manufacturing jobs now and much long to the future. But we wouldn't have nearly the opportunity to grow this without the support of our congressional delegation. They stepped up. They supported the CHIPS Act. Uh, and they led, Ohio, Ohioans, Ohio's congressional delegation led in helping its passage. And I want to thank those members of Congress who are here today. And let me uh, welcome one of the key leaders to this, Senator Rob Portman. Well, John, thank you very much. And uh, Governor DeWine, thanks for including us today in this tour. It was fascinating, and uh, I love talking to the workers about the opportunities that they see here. Um, I spoke to Keegan, who Ryan identified as the first intern, and uh, he started at age 17, coming out of Miami Valley Tech. He's now at Sinclair, uh, getting a certificate in machining. And Ryan and the guys here uh, behind me, who are the owners of this company, are paying his way through Sinclair, and actually paying him his salary as he's at Sinclair. So it's a great example of where huge opportunities are here for, for Ohioans who are willing to step forward and, and get into manufacturing companies like this. It's good money, good benefits. You know, we talk a lot about the fact that Intel is coming to Ohio and we're all so excited about it. They're gonna start with two fabs uh, because we finally passed this so-called CHIPS legislation. Who knows, they may go beyond that. That's 3,000 full-time jobs, 7,000 jobs on the construction side just to create these incredibly sophisticated fabs. And we'll be together uh, in a week or so uh, with Intel celebrating that. What we talk about less is the fact that uh, there's a whole ecosystem that grows up around that. Uh, they say there are 10,000 indirect jobs. Uh, that's true, but that doesn't take into account all the suppliers. And by having Intel here in Ohio, it attracts suppliers. This company decided to come even before Intel made its decision, uh, but others are now looking at Ohio. And you know what they're finding? They're finding a good business climate here. And a lot of that is due to the work of Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor Houston, who created the opportunity here for companies to have a better regulatory environment, a better tax environment. And as Ryan told me, we were walking around about his decision to come here. Uh, and some of his uh, other owners shared this, workforce. Now that's relative to California, which may be relatively easy, but even relative to some states in the Midwest, you know, we're all about training people up for these jobs. And as I said, you know, there's some great opportunities. So folks need to know that career and technical education in Ohio is a step ahead of most other states. Our community colleges are doing an awesome job we would like to pass more legislation at the federal level to be able to ensure that people can get funding from the federal government if they choose to become a machinist or become a welder or become a coder or become a hospital tech or become a truck driver rather than going to college. It's called the Jobs Act. We've gotten it right up to the finish line a couple times. We hope to get it across the finish line yet this year. And it's legislation I've worked on for four or five years. It would make a big difference for students like Keegan. Finally, in the CHIPS legislation, uh, less uh, talked about is legislation called the Domestic Semiconductor Manufacturing Act. And it's authored, uh, I co-authored it in the Senate, but it's supported by Bill Johnson and Steve Shabbat and Mike Turner. And these guys, as Republicans in the House, were under some pressure to vote the other way on this legislation. I will tell you that, having talked to all three of them. They did the right thing for Ohio, including putting this legislation about domestic manufacturing within the CHIPS Act. What does that mean? That means that suppliers can also apply for help because this is not just about, again, the Intel plant, it's about all the suppliers that are needed. The QQE is a great example of that. QQE provides this quartz to a supplier who then provides a product, the silicon wafer, to Intel. So there's an opportunity for that. And we talked today about maybe getting this intermediary company to be an Ohio company uh, because America needs to be sure that we have a reliable source of these products. And the supply chain, as we saw in COVID, is really important. And this legislation, the CHIPS Act, again, it's not just about the intels of the world, as important as that is, but it's also about having that reliable supply chain. So we look forward to working with you going forward, guys, and congratulations on your successes so far. 
I now get to introduce Mike Turner, who represents this area. Um, he is a leader now in the Congress on so many issues, including on the Intelligence Committee, but he has a passion for manufacturing, always has, and uh, that's one reason that the Dayton area has been so successful, along with Jeff and Miami Valley Development Corporation and others. So, Mike Turner. Thank you, Senator. Um, I am the representative from this area, and it's always my pleasure to welcome the governor to what really is his hometown, since his hometown is here in the Miami Valley, and Lieutenant Governor, whose roots are also here. Uh, Randy, thank you for having us. And Governor, thank you for highlighting today the importance of the work that's done here at QQE. Uh, what our governor has accomplished is for the future. Uh, bringing intel to this area gives us a vision of not just increased jobs, but advanced manufacturing, advanced assembly and advanced research that are going to be the innovation and the manufacturing and the prosperity for Ohio in the future and QQE gets to be a part of that. Now this is a story about jobs that are abroad that are going to be coming back not just to America but to Ohio itself and that's as a result of the hard work of our governor and thank you uh, for delivering that. Uh, this is a, an incredible accomplishment for our country and even for Ohio because as we look to securing our supply chain, for our international competitiveness, and even for our national security, accomplishing what we're going to see as Intel grows out of the ground and the supply chain that grows from it in branches is going to make a difference in the security for our country. Now, I was very pleased to support the CHIPS Act as a result of what the governor accomplished here. We already knew before we voted for the CHIPS Act as to what the governor had accomplished in securing Intel. So many times there's legislation that comes before Congress where we want to encourage an industry, where we want to encourage competitiveness. This, this is one where it was an already done deal. We got to pass legislation that we knew already was going to make a difference and we were, was going to result in the governor's accomplishment here in Ohio. So, Governor, thank you. Future Ohioans will be thanking you as we look to what will come from Intel and all of the investment that we're going to see from Ohio as a result from this work. Thank you, Governor. Our legislature has been <clears throat> extremely supportive of having Intel come in. Uh, I want to thank Representative Brian Lampton, who is here. Appreciated his work. He's also been very, very supportive, <clears throat> I know, of the Career Center. Um, and, and this, again, I would also thank this delegation. Uh, this delegation, the congressional delegation, uh, has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and we just, we'd appreciate all, all of their work and what they have done. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions and kind of open it up. Okay. We've got it. You guys got it covered. All right. Thank you all very much.